It has been known for a long time that some patients with seizures originating in the temporal lobes have intense religious auras, intense experience of God visiting them. Sometimes it's a personal God, sometimes it's a more diffuse feeling of being one with the cosmos. Everything seems suffused with meaning. The patient will say, finally, I see what it's all really about, doctor. I really understand God. I understand my place in the universe, in the cosmic scheme. Why does this happen? And why does it happen so often in patients with temporal lobe seizures? My attitude was I was God, and then I had heaven and hell in my eyes. That was it, you know what I mean? I was the, the grand guy who created heaven and hell. John's epileptic seizures are essentially an electrical storm in his temporal lobes, when a group of neurons start firing at random, out of sync with the rest of his brain. Recently, John experienced one of his worst episodes to date. For nearly a week, he had eight seizures a day. Each seizure lasted about five minutes and involved violent convulsions that left him unconscious. I basically had made plans with an ex-girlfriend to go out to the Salt River in Arizona, out in the desert. This girl likes to drink a lot. And to keep up with her, I uh, started drinking vodka martinis and I went into some serious seizures out there. Later that day, John somehow managed to get a call through to his father who immediately drove out to the desert to bring him home. On the way home, him and I just got into some philosophical, you know, questions about everything, and I just would not shut up once I got on the way home. I was going and going. It was like I was wired. It's basically an earthquake within the body. And like any earthquake, there are aftershocks. Mainly what I deal with is the aftermath, particularly with this last episode. It was very much like stepping into a Salvador Dali painting. Okay, it, instantly everything was surreal. And that's, in essence, what his seizures are all about, the aftermath. Um, where it puts his brain, where it puts his memory, where it puts his mind, his thinking ability, everything else. When John eventually came through this last episode, he was exhausted but he felt omnipotent. I went running down the street screaming that I was God. And then this guy came out and I was just like pelvic thrust at him and his wife. And I was like, you want an effing bet? I ain't God. And I said, literally, you asshole, get back in here. What do you think you're doing? You made me. Come on, Come back on, in. All right. Come on back all in right. now. I'm Come going, on. I'm going. You know, you're disturbing the neighbors, you're going to call the cops. What is this all about? All right? All right, all right, you're all okay. right. You're okay. You're not God. <laughs> I kind of just looked at him cool and calm and apologized to him, and I'm like, no, no one's going to call the police. Like, it, I didn't say this last part, but I'm thinking to myself, no one's going to call the police on God. John was introduced to Ramachandran by his doctor, who knew of Ramachandran's interest in disorders that straddle the boundary between neurology and psychiatry. John had had a recent seizure, which made their encounter very emotional. When I listen to certain types of music, I have this connection with another world, almost. And it's very hard to convey it to another person. Uh, yeah, if you were to ask my dad, he would just say, I am completely through the gateway and into another reality 100 percent indeed a separate physical reality is every bit as real to him mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. although it is absolutely nothing like this reality is to us i have looked in his eyes in those times and i have seen seen a cry for help I've been in so much pain that I'd rather be shot to death, dude, or just whipped to death. Mm -hmm. Whipped also, to also death. Also joy? Yeah, I've Somewhere. been in so much joy that I would rather 
you're left alone, man. Get, get, take everything away and just let me sit there and have that much joy. I feel like I can float and stuff sometimes, you know? Okay. It's just, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like the best. People, people just go, what are you talking? I've done, I've gone, done all kinds of drugs and things and been with, you know, women. And I just go, you don't understand, man. Very first seizure I can remember, he was 17 years old. Okay. So and until 17, he was kind of pretty much like any other kid. He went through the usual adolescent problems. Very much bit. so, yeah. But otherwise, was your family, are you religious or is he religious at, before that time? Uh, not, uh, not, no. Now, why do these patients have intense religious experiences when they have these seizures? And why do they become preoccupied with theological and religious matters even in between seizures? One possibility is, well, maybe God actually visits them. But if that's true, as a scientist, I can't test this. There's no way of finding out. One possibility is that the seizure activity in the temporal lobe somehow creates all kinds of odd, strange emotions in the person's mind, in the person's brain. And this welling up of bizarre emotions may be interpreted by the patient as, as visits from another world uh, or as God is visiting me. Maybe that's the only way he can make sense of this welter of strange emotions uh, going on in his brain. <laughs> 